Hey everybody, I've got another package back from CBCS, so let's do an unboxing. If you caught my unboxing video from a few weeks ago, I mentioned that that was one of two orders I currently had at CBCS waiting to be graded. Well, the other one has finally arrived. This one was actually submitted before the other one. It was dropped off at Planet Comic Con back in August with all of the changes to CBCS's turn times. They were fairly low when I submitted the order, then they shot up uh, to like 12 weeks at one point. And now they're back down to, I believe, six to eight weeks. This order kind of got lost in the ether in the midst of all those changes, but it has finally made it back to me. So I'm happy to be able to do this unboxing video and share these really cool books with you all. There's a pretty wide variety in here, so I think there will be something that appeals to pretty much everybody. If you're interested in values and want to know what these books are worth, stick around till the end of the video, and I'll cover that stuff after we get through the unboxing portion. Now, to save you all the time and noise, I'm going to go ahead and crack this box open and get the books out, and I'll show you what I just got back from CBCS. All right, I've got them all unpackaged. I've got seven books that made up this order. So let's dive in to the very first book. I think this is one you might recognize. First up is Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number One. This is a CBCS 3.0 with white pages. So this is a 1964 Marvel Squarebound Annual. It's a really tough book. I'm really happy with the grade. I didn't expect um, a 3.0. I was thinking more like a 2 or a 2.5. So this one, they actually declined to press which makes sense because the spine's not the best. So I don't really begrudge them for not wanting to take on that risk. But this book is super hot with No Way Out just coming out, the you know multitude of villains that are in that. Um, of course, we did not get the full Sinister Six, but probably about as close as uh, we're gonna get for a while and definitely as close as we've gotten up to this point but still really tough book, especially in higher grades, just due to the general fact that those very early 60s square bound books are always just beat to hell. Um, so really happy with the grade on this and um, glad to have this one back. Next up is another key that's moving quite a bit in the market right now. That is Avengers 8. This is a 5.5 with off-white white pages. Uh, overall, I was really happy with the page quality in this submission, uh, with a couple of exceptions. Most of the books are either off-white to white pages. So a lot of off-white whites and off-white, and then the white uh, pages we had with the Avenger or the uh, Spider-Man annual. So really happy with that for the most part. Of course, this book being the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror, it's really picked up steam uh, ever since we learned that Kang was likely going to be our main villain moving forward in the MCU, especially with um, the first real appearance of uh, Kang coming up in Quantumania. And of course, there was all the Kang goodness in Loki. So this book has definitely been heating up. This is one I was speculating on for a while. I've had this copy for a bit and I kind of had the I don't want to sell it price on it because I suspected we might get to this point. And now we're here. And um, honestly, I may hang on to this one. I may uh, put this in my personal collection and wind up flipping my current copy that's in my PC out into the inventory because this one wound up being quite a bit nicer uh, than the one I have in my personal collection after I actually stopped and took a look at it. So this one might be mine, but We'll see what happens there. Up next, we have a very tough book to find. In my opinion, this is from 1959. This is Batman 121. It's the first appearance of Mr. Zero, which we would later know as Mr. Freeze. This came back at a 2.5 with cream to off-white pages. Uh, so we're a little on the lower end of the page quality for the total submission. But like I said, this book is from 1959 so it's seen a few things so i'm really happy with the way it presents especially for the grade um, i really don't have any arguments with that it's one of those still attainable first appearances for the batman's bro gallery especially for a villain that's been around as long as mr freeze has when you get into 
the rogues gallery members that have their first appearances in the golden age those things are just piggy bank busters um, and some of them just are completely out of reach like catwoman and joker first appearing in batman one that one's just it's not in the cards for most collectors so a nice first appearance of a bat villain like this that's still affordable for some collectors uh, again not everybody's going to be able to afford this book even in, in this grade but it's a lot more attainable than some of the really heavy hitters that are out there so happy to have this one back in really pleased with the grade keeping with the batman trend next up we have a 5.0 copy of batman 181 this is the first appearance of poison ivy and this has off-white pages so it's a pretty nice copy it is complete so it has the pin up inside and what a lot of people don't realize or some people get burned by is that this book has a pin up poster in the centerfold so if you ever get your hands on a raw copy of this book be sure to check that centerfold and make sure there's a pin up in there because if there's no pin up then you're looking at an incomplete book and that can really sink you when it comes to value poison ivy is a character that's really kind of increased in popularity over the last couple of decades and for some reason up until this last year her first appearance hadn't really done a lot we finally seen the market correct that there was some really crazy high sales for a 9.8 and that's helped drag the values of some of the lower grade copies up but it's nice to see this book actually getting some attention and seeing a proper price correction um, since the market kind of ignored it for a long time. This is another one I'm happy to have back and uh, very pleased with the grade overall. These next two we will do together because, well, they're the same book. And interestingly enough, they came back the same grade. Up next, I've got two copies of Submariner number one. Uh, they are both 4.5s and they both have cream to off-white pages. So they are not the prettiest copies of this book you'll ever see, but they're just solid, lower grade books, um, very collectible, still pretty affordable. And with all the Submariner rumors going around and just expectations that we're gonna see Namor pop up in the MCU, this I think is gonna be a book that a lot of collectors are gonna really turn to because FF number four, his first Silver Age appearance, is just out of reach. Um, that book is thousands of dollars, even in the very low grades, and most collectors just can't swing that. So this book that can still be had for in the low hundreds, you get raw copies, you can uh, probably find it around 100 or 150 bucks. This is gonna be a book that I think a lot of collectors turn to. I would categorize this book right there with like Doctor Strange 169, Iron Man number one. I just think this is a really easy book for collectors to get interested in and to want to pick up. So two copies of this, glad to have them back. I think they they present really well in these new CBCS slabs. I thought one or the other of them might come back a little bit better than the other, but you know, I'll, I'll take what I got there. I'm a, um, I'm pretty okay with those grades. I think they're still very collectible. They present well, and it'll be a great way for a collector to check that box in their collection without coming out a uh, pocket for a, a ton of money. And our last book is X-Men 94. This is a 5.0 with off-white white white pages. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, this definitely was not the best copy of this book I've ever had. I knew that when I sent it. Um, but when I sent this order in in August, the world was really different. We were still just week after week, day after day with climbing values and just exploding record after record. So I decided it'd be worth the effort to send this one in. And I think it'll make some X-Men collector really happy one of these days. Um, nice, solid mid-grade. It's Definitely got some visible issues on it, but it presents fairly well. I think there's somebody out there who would love to have this book, so I'm gonna be happy to get it in their hands one of these days. All right, if you've watched this far already, thank you very much. If you don't wanna stick around for the part of the video where we talk about the values of these books, 
thank you for watching to this point. If you got value out of the video, hit the like button on your way out and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. But now let's talk about the values of these books. We are, we're gonna be talking GPA values. I'm gonna give you the last sale and the 90 day average for the Amazing Spider-Man annual number one. The last sale was $1,854 and the current 90 day average value is $1,623. This book is still trending higher with no way out, just hitting theaters. It's what you'd expect to see due to the relative scarcity of this book. I don't know how much of a fall off you'll see in value now that the movie's out. Typically we would expect to see the book settle back down uh, in the coming weeks and months since the hype of the movie will start to fade, but this is still a pretty tough book to find. So it may be a little more resistant to that than most books, but we'll just have to see for now. It's still going strong for the Avengers eight last sale on an Avengers eight was $1,550. And the 90 day average is actually a bit higher than that at $1,718, which just supports the fact that we are in a little bit of a market correction, whereas prices are coming back down, uh, you know, whether it's 10 or 20% for most books. We're also kind of in a downtime between Loki, which was really teasing Kang, and until we get to Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, we're just, we're kind of in that lull where there's no trailers, there's no talk, there's no fresh reveals revolving Kang right now. So it makes sense that this book would fall off a little bit as the market does tend to be very focus centric. So if the spotlight's not shining on a book at any given moment, it kind of falls out of the attention of a lot of collectors. And when that happens, deals can be found and prices tend to drop. So this book is still up quite a bit from where it was. And I'm not too concerned that we're going to see the price continue to fall on that once we get a trailer from Quantum Mania and we see an actual true version of Kang, I think this thing's gonna shoot right back up and continue that pretty steep climb in value leading into that movie, especially if Kang is going to be our Thanos level threat for the MCU for the next several movies or throughout this phase. For the Batman 121, the last sale of this book was $1,175. We don't really have any 90 day average data as one hasn't sold since October of 2020. So what I did here is I looked to some of the surrounding grades that had more current sales. A 3.0 sold for $1,806 earlier this month in December 2021, while a 2.0 sold for $1,107 in October of 2021. So I would estimate the value of this book right now to be between $1,500 and $1,600. Um, again, it's not a overly common issue. I don't think that estimate is necessarily out of line. And for a, a, a Batman collector, I think that's a pretty reasonable price to pay for the first appearance of such a classic villain. For the Batman 181 in a 5.0, our last sale was $1,138, and it's actually the only sale we've had in the last 90 days, so that is also the 90-day average, so $1,138. Earlier in 2021, this book peaked in value at $1,481 in September. So it's come down a bit. Again, you know, we're, we are seeing that correction, so it's, it's not overly surprising but it's just another one of those books that I'm not worried about. It's not gonna take much for this thing to get back and continue that general trend of increasing values. Like I said, I'm still happy to see this book finally getting a little bit of attention in the market and trending in the right direction after being pretty undervalued for a long time. For our pair of Submariner number ones, the last sale was $348 and the 90 day average sales price for a four five Submariner one is $393. When uh, I sent this order in, prices for this book had really started to shoot up. They've come back down now. Again, like I said, I think it's just the correction and with no breaking Submariner news, I think while we're all kind of catching our breath after the crazy price increases of the spring and summer, it's just natural for this to come back down a little bit. 
as interest in the Submariner increases, I don't think we're going to be waiting very long before this book is worth five or six hundred dollars again. It's it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. So great book. And if you don't have one of these, I'd go ahead and pick one up sooner rather than later if I were you. And for our last book, X-Men number 94 in a CBCS 5.0, the 90 day average is $631 and our last sale was $625. So this book is fairly stable over the last 90 days. However, it really peaked this spring when Giant Size X-Men 1 was going crazy. X-Men 94 kind of rode its coattails for a bit and the value for a 5.0 peaked at $1,600 in April of 2021, which is just crazy considering this book was selling for just a couple of hundred bucks on average in 2020. Between April and June of this year, 2021, there were multiple sales in a 5.0 of $1,000 plus. So this book is definitely being impacted by the market correction and that's fine. I think the market kind of overreacted with X-Men 1 and Giant Size X-Men 1 um, earlier this year. Don't get me wrong, they were both really undervalued but i think we got out over our skis a little bit with them and and now we're kind of coming back to reality and balancing out to where the values are more in line with where they should be do i think a 50 x-men 94 is a thousand dollar plus book i'm i'm really not sure that it is i i think 600 700 in that range makes a lot more sense now when you get into the higher grades with this dark cover, it's prone to color breaks really bad along the spine. That, that greenish black just really breaks pretty easy. When you get into the higher grades, yeah, definitely it deserves a four figure price point. And when you're talking upper nines, you're probably gonna hit the fives. That makes sense. But for a, a solid mid-grade copy like this, I don't think we're ready for a thousand dollar price point, at least not a sustained thousand dollar price point for this book just yet. Will that change once we get the X-Men in the MCU? It may well, um, but until then, enjoy this nice little breather in the price. And if you're an X-Men fan that doesn't have an X-Men 94, I would make sure you find it on your 2022 list before one of those things happens. That's all I've got for you in this video today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. For now, that's all the books I've got out to be graded. Once I get back out on the road in 2022 and get to some more shows and things, I may submit another order. But for now, I've greatly increased the number of slab books in the inventory. So I think we're gonna take a little pause on grading unless something just really crazy comes up. I do have a, a small stack of books kind of set aside that I'd like to get graded before I sold them. But we need to get back out there on the road and uh, get a few shows under our belt before we send in another order at this point. So I hope you enjoyed the video, collect responsibly, and I'll see you in the next one.